Hello friends, welcome back to Cosmopolitan Cornbread. So I might look a little flushed because I just got done walking all the dogs and it's a little toasty outside. And I was sitting down to begin working on my video when I realized that the entire first portion of the video that I filmed this morning um, was gone. I don't know what happened, uh, but the entire first couple of minutes were missing. So I'm going to reintroduce this recipe that I'm going to share with all of you today and then we'll pick up where the video starts. So in my last home ec lesson, I walked you through making French bread and we kneaded the dough by hand. Today we're going to make another yeast bread recipe and this yeast bread recipe is a basic white bread and the dough itself is very versatile. You can make all sorts of different things out of it and I'll talk about that a little bit later on when we get into the forming of the dough. Now this video is designed for people who are new to baking, who are just learning, and so while I would normally make this bread with fresh milled wheat, today I'm going to be making it with your classic unbleached bread flour that you can buy at any grocery store, which is what people usually use when they first start out baking breads. And so with that, we will pick up where I was filming this morning as I was getting ready to start the actual recipe. All right, now for this recipe, I'm using regular active dry yeast. And so before I do any of the rest of my instructions, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna wake up my yeast by taking some of the water from the recipe and putting my yeast in there, and that will wake up the yeast and uh, get it going. Now this recipe calls for one cup plus one tablespoon of warm water. So I'm gonna go ahead and use a quarter of a cup of the water, and then later when I add in the rest of the water, I'll only need three quarters of a cup plus the tablespoon. So I have the warm water, and now I'm gonna go ahead and add in my yeast. And this recipe calls for two and a quarter teaspoon of yeast. I'm just gonna give that a quick little stir. Kind of mix that yeast in there. Now, if you wanted to, you could also put a little pinch of sugar in there just to give that yeast something to eat as it wakes up. All right, we're gonna set that aside for now while we measure out the rest of our ingredients. I'm gonna need three and a half cups of unbleached bread flour. And remember I talked about how when you're measuring out flour, you don't wanna just cram your measuring cup into the flour. If you wanna be extra careful, you can take a spoon, spoon it into your measuring cup. I'm using these measuring scoops. I just kind of turn my container of flour and, and let the flour fall into the scoop. And I'm gonna take my little offset spatula and level off my measuring cup. And this is probably not the right container to be doing this with. <laughs> All right. and then into the mixing bowl. Next, I'm gonna need one room temperature egg, and I'm gonna break this into a separate container or a separate dish, because if the egg is bad or if the 
or if the uh, eggshell kind of disintegrates in my hand. I want to make sure I'm not dumping this straight into my mixing bowl because that would be much harder to get eggshell out. I'm going to need a quarter of a cup of honey. We'll go ahead and add this in. Get that all out of there. We're going to need one and a half teaspoons of salt. Now we're going to need one and a half tablespoons of extra virgin olive oil, but most measuring spoon sets don't come with a half of a tablespoon. So knowing the size of a tablespoon and knowing to convert measurements into other measurements comes in very handy. One tablespoon is the same as three teaspoons. So a half of a tablespoon would be one and a half teaspoons, which is half of three. So we're going to need the one tablespoon plus another teaspoon and a half. Now I'm going to add in my yeast, which you can see is very awake by the fact that it is all puffy and bubbly. So I'm going to put this into my mixing bowl, but I'm not going to put it on the side where I dumped the salt. I want to put it on the other side because salt and yeast actually don't go well together, at least not directly. Okay, now remember this recipe calls for one cup plus one tablespoon of warm water, but I used a quarter of a cup to wake up the yeast. So I'm just going to need three quarters of a cup plus another tablespoon. Check the temperature. If it's a little too warm, we want to cool it down. And we'll add one more tablespoon. Double check the temperature. Yep, and we are good. So we're going to go pour that in. Now my mixer here is fitted with a dough hook attachment. And so I'm going to put the lid on to keep all of the ingredients inside. And then I'm going to go ahead and turn it on and let it run for 10 minutes. But I'm going to watch this as it begins to develop because if the dough is too sticky, we may need to add a little bit of extra flour. You want a soft dough to form, but you don't want it to be all over the place and sticking to the bowl. So we'll watch it, make sure it's coming along well, and add flour if we need to. If you do have to add flour, you only want to add a tiny little bit at a time, just enough so that it doesn't stick to your bowl. Maybe a tablespoon at a time.
right, my timer just went off. And so now I'm going to look at my bread dough here. We've got a nice stretchy dough. So I'm gonna put my lid right back on. And I'm just gonna take my entire bowl with the dough and I'm gonna set it in my warm location and let this bread dough rise for about 45 minutes to an hour. It's going to vary depending upon how warm your environment is, what kind of yeast you're using. If you're using instant yeast, it tends to rise pretty quickly and so you won't need as long of a time. But we're gonna take this, put it in the nice warm oven, and we'll set a timer and we'll just keep an eye on it. And when it's doubled in size, we'll be ready for the next step. If your mixing bowl doesn't have a lid, you can just take a damp tea towel, put it over the top of the bowl and use that instead. And of course, while my dough was mixing, I went ahead and I cleaned up my mess and I'll go ahead and put my mixer away and get everything put up and we'll just wait for the dough to get ready. Alright friends, so while my bread has been rising, I've been working on my ironing over there and I just paused it because my timer went off and I'm going to show you how our bread is. Check out that dough there. That has definitely doubled in size. So now it's time to form our loaves. Now this recipe makes two of your standard loaf pan size loaves. Um, I don't remember the exact measurements of it. I'll put it right down here on the screen. Um, but this recipe makes two of these or it makes some other things as well. And while I'm forming these loaves, I'm going to talk about some of the other things that you can do with that. But first, we're going to prepare our pans. These pans, you can spray them with baking spray. You can, you can grease and flour them, or you can use a mixture that I call a baking spray replacement. I have a recipe for this on my website, and I just brush this onto my pans, and it keeps everything from sticking. I'm just going to brush this into my pans. I'm going to brush it in the bottom and I'm going to brush it up on the sides as well. And I will talk about and demonstrate how to grease and flour a pan in another video. Now before we get started, we want to make sure of course that our hands are clean. We want to make sure that our surface is clean. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to sprinkle a little bit of flour onto our surface just so that our bread dough doesn't stick to it. Some people will use a little bit of oil when they do this instead of flour. That's another option. And I'm going to just kind of pull my dough hook out of there. And I'm just going to flour my hands a little bit and I'm just going to pull the dough out onto my surface. Okay. I'm just going to kind of take the dough with floured hands just kind of give it just a very quick kneading, basically just pushing out any big air bubbles and making sure that that dough is sticking all together in a cohesive piece since I just kind of pulled it all apart as I was getting it out of that bowl there. Okay, so we've got some beautiful dough here. So now since I'm making two loaves of bread, I'm going to go ahead and just divide this in half. And this tool that I'm using here is called a dough blade. There's, they come in all different sizes and shapes. This one's got a long handle like a knife. And I'm just going to cut this in half. Okay. 
All right, so now we have two portions that are equally sized. So now you don't wanna just take this lump of, of dough and plop it into your pan. You wanna make sure that your loaf is gonna have a nice shape to it. And so to do that, I just take my fingers and I push the dough into kind of a rectangle shape. And you may remember that we did something kind of like this when we were forming the French, uh, French bread loaves. So just kind of spread that out and then I'm gonna roll it up nice and tightly on itself. So we have kind of a log shape. And if you see any air bubbles coming to the surface, kind of pinch them and get, the, get those air bubbles out. Otherwise you'll have big air bubbles in your bread, which won't hurt anything. You'll just have air bubbles in your bread. So I take the ends and I kind of tuck them underneath. And so I'm going to take this loaf just like this and set it in my loaf pan, like so. Now we're gonna do the same thing with this portion of dough, but first I'm gonna share a couple of tips with you. Now this bread dough is just a basic white bread dough, but this basic bread dough can be used for all sorts of things besides just loaves of bread. The same exact recipe has been used for my wonderful dinner rolls. I've used it to make cinnamon swirl bread. I've used this to make cinnamon rolls. I also use it to make German apple bread. It is a very versatile kind of bread dough. You can also roll it out or pat it out like you're doing biscuits. Take a biscuit cutter, cut the dough like so. And now what you would have here after it has risen and been baked is hamburger buns. Another option is to take the dough, roll it out into a log. Now, if you were doing this, you would wanna make it very even, but this is just kind of an example. You could take a log of, of this dough, roll it out, cut it into portions, you would want to make them evenly if you were actually making this recipe. Skinny little long rolls. Put them in a prepared pan, let them rise, bake them, and then you have hot dog buns. But that is not what we're going to do today. We're going to make just another loaf of bread. So now I'm going to take all of this dough put it back together. So we'll give it a quick kneading to get it back into one cohesive piece. So then again, we'll pat it out into kind of a, get a little sticky there, into kind of a rectangle. Roll it up. Nice and snug. Tuck under the ends and put it in our pan. So now I'm gonna take both of these pans, I'm gonna cover them with my damp tea towel and I'm gonna put them back into my warm spot in my oven with the light on and we're gonna let them rise again until they're double in size and then they'll be ready to be baked. All right, friends, so I have the oven preheating to 325 degrees. It'll be going off any second. And as you can see, the bread is done rising. And there it is for the oven. We have it doubled in size. Now I have a little dish here with about two tablespoons of milk. And I've got my little brush. And we're just going to brush the tops of the bread with some milk. You could also use some extra virgin olive oil or you could leave them plain. But by coating the, the bread, it helps it brown up a little bit better and it makes the crust have a nice texture. So I'm just gonna brush this very gently all over the top.
All right. So now these are gonna go into the oven for 18 minutes or until they are nice and golden. All right, you guys, so as you can see, I have the loaves of bread sitting here on a cooling rack. So now I'm going to very carefully remove them from the pans and then let them cool completely on the rack. So I'm gonna take my offset spatula and I'm just gonna kind of run it around the edge. Even though I coated my pan, I always do this just to make extra sure that the bread isn't gonna stick. I don't want it to tear when it comes out of the pan. Now use a clean dry towel to do this, kind of like this, flip it over, let it sit there. And we'll do this one. Again, clean, dry towel, fold it up. There we go. Oop, I just kind of whacked that with the pan. All right. So now I'm just going to take my towel that I just used and I'm just going to cover these up. And the reason I do this. And I don't want any kind of dust or lint or anything floating around landing on landing on my bread. But also the towel kind of holds in the steam and a little bit of the heat. And so it kind of allows these loaves to cool down slowly and not get dry out. Now as tempting as it is, you never want to take a bread knife and just slice into a loaf of hot bread that just came out of the oven because what's going to happen is all of that steam that is trapped inside there that makes your your bread fluffy and 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 moist and all of that all that steam is going to come out and you're going to end up with really dry bread and that would be tragic so you're going to wait until your bread cools down now it could still be a little bit warm but you don't want it piping hot when you slice into it so we're going to let this cool and we'll check in on it in a little while Hi friends, so it's been a little while and our bread is just about room temperature. So I'm going to grab one of my cutting boards here and my bread knife. And I get a lot of questions about this bread knife. It's called a bow style knife because it's kind of like a violin bow. And I did purchase this from Amazon. I'll put a link to this in the video description. All right, so let's cut into a slice of this bread. Look at that. So this bread is pillowy soft bread, uh, just absolutely delicate and soft. It is kind of soft for sandwiches, but we do use this for sandwiches. But there you go. Homemade white bread. And like I said, you can use this exact same recipe and instead of making it into two loaves of bread, you can make it into dinner rolls, cinnamon rolls, German apple bread, hamburger buns, hot dog buns, all sorts of things. It is extremely all-purpose. So if you would like to make this recipe, you can get a printable version of it on my website, cosmopolitancornbread.com, and I will put a link directly to that recipe in the video description down below. 
If you make it and you like this recipe, I would love for you to give me a five star rating on the recipe card there on my website. It helps other people find my recipe and tells Google that it's good. So this concludes our portion of the home ec on breads. In the next lesson, two weeks from now, we will be moving on to a new topic. Thanks for joining me here again in the Homestead Kitchen. My name is Constance from Cosmopolitan Cornbread, and I'll talk to y'all next time.